Once we have determined what the roles are, we now have to organize these roles into a structure. Now this structure is most often seen using this particular tool. How many have ever seen one of these? We call this an organizational chart. I work with my clients and very often I'll ask to see their organizational charts. They're very proud of their organizational charts because they work on them diligently. In fact, they work on them so diligently that they very often don't even have the latest version. They have to get on the intercom to ask someone to bring in the latest version. It's usually warm off the printer. Someone brings it in, hands it to my client that I'm having a discussion with. They look at it. They're just about to hand it over to me when they snatch it back and go, wait a minute, there's just a couple of changes that I need to make on this organization chart. Now it's these changes that I find very interesting. Uh, one of the most interesting changes is the dotted line responsibility. Now what the dotted line responsibility means, Randy, still paying attention? What this dotted line responsibility means, Randy, is this key result area over here you're not really responsible for. You only have a dotted line. But I got news for you. If the wheels come off over here, you my friend are in the hot seat. Dotted lines create ambiguity. Ambiguity kills accountability. Get rid of your dotted lines. They kill accountability. Now the other thing that I find interesting on here is the dual manager. If you want to make someone schizophrenic, give them two managers. By the way, if you'd like to set someone free, give them three managers. No one will be able to hold them accountable for anything. So let's talk about management. Let's talk about the role of a manager. Not just the role of a manager, but the definition of a manager and what the purpose of management is. Because it's not what you think. Let's start by looking at the role of a manager. The definition of a manager is that person in the organization held accountable for the output of other people. That person in the organization held accountable for the output of other people. If a ship runs aground at night because the night watchman fell asleep, who do we fire? The captain. the captain. Why? Because it is the captain who is accountable for the output of other people. Keep this in mind because it's going to get a bit more complicated as we move through this next section. What is the purpose for management? See, there's something I have to beat out of my students in my leadership class on day one. They all show up, they sit around in tables like this, and I look at them and I tell them, you are not a manager so people can report to you. You think that's why you're a manager, so people can report to you. You are not a manager so people can report to you. That is not the purpose of management. The purpose of management is to bring value to the problem solving and decision making of your team members. Elliot's principle is that every employee is entitled to have a competent manager with the time span capability to bring that value. Now we screw this up all the time. What happens here in this situation? Gene and Paul have worked for me for a really long time. Uh, Gene started the company with me eight years ago. I'm the CEO. Gene started the company eight years ago. Gene is one of the best Stratum II supervisors on the planet. He knows how to drive production. He hits production targets every single day. Now, I've been feeling guilty as a Stratum V CEO because I've always been his manager for the last eight years because that's the way it kind of worked out. We started that way and I'm still his manager. Yet, as the Stratum V CEO, I've got all kinds of new things that I need to be paying attention to. I haven't been paying attention to Gene and so, I actually feel like I need to apologize until I get this brilliant idea. You see, Paul just joined the firm two years ago because we were having some system integration issues, some Stratum 4 type issues. Paul, system integration specialist, we brought him into the organization, solved those problems, we kept him on as one of our vice presidents. I, as the CEO, now have this brilliant idea. I haven't been able to spend time with Gene, my supervisor, on my supervisory team. I'm wondering if Paul can be Gene's new manager. See the picture here? So I sit and bring him to the conference room and I sit down and first I apologize to Gene for not being able to spend time helping him solve problems, make decisions. And I was just wondering if from now on, if Paul could be your new manager. And Paul, I know you've got a lot on your plate as well, but as a personal favor to me, if you could be Gene's new manager, uh, would that be okay with you? And how do they respond? 
Because you see, as the CEO, not only can I make a mistake, I can approve it. <laughs> Two weeks later, Gene's in my office going, Tom, I know you wanted Paul to be my new manager, but I got to tell you, every time we get together, he talks about these pie charts and these bar charts. He talks about the big picture, what we're all about here. I try to explain to him, you know, down on the floor, sometimes we get raw materials in from our vendors that are out of spec and we have to reject those raw materials. Sometimes we reject our raw materials, our productivity goes down. And do you remember that machine that we were going to replace last year but decided to hobble it along for one more year? Breaks down a little more often than it used to. Whenever it breaks down, our productivity goes down. Try to explain this stuff to Paul and he just keeps talking about these pie charts and these bar charts in the big picture. So don't worry about it, Gene. Go on back, you're doing a fine job, nothing's, nothing's wrong. I'll take care of this. So who do I call in next? Paul. Paul. Uh, just wanted to let you know you're doing a great job as one of our Stratum 4 Vice Presidents. But, you know, I was just talking to Gene. Paul stops me cold. Don't listen to that Gene guy. That Gene guy doesn't see the big picture. That Gene guy doesn't know what we're all about here. Bottom line is Paul bringing value to Gene's problem solving and decision making on the floor. What's missing? Specifically, what stratum number is missing? Now, it could be any numbered strata, but it would be a missing layer, a missing role Elliot would call the translator role. Someone to translate Paul's big picture stuff, because that's actually what we hired him to do in the first place. Someone to translate Paul's big picture stuff into time span appropriate task assignments that Gene can now go drive on the production floor. What happens here? Actually, this team used to have a manager, but he went fly fishing to Montana and he called in well. He said, well, I ain't coming back. So we lined the team up against the wall and picked the tallest one to be the new manager. Bottom line is this new manager have the time span capability to bring value to the problem solving and decision making of the rest of the team. So given a difficult problem to solve, he solves problems the same way they do. Given a, given a difficult decision to make, he makes decisions the way, same way they do. So this would be the requisite organization where each person in stratum one has an appropriate manager in stratum two who has an appropriate manager in stratum three, with an appropriate manager in stratum four, one stratum separation. But doesn't this look like a hierarchy? And haven't we been told by recent management consultants that hierarchy is bad? What we really need around here is some tribal leadership. Now, Ellie would actually agree that bad hierarchy is bad, but hierarchy is actually necessary. In fact, what is the root word of requisite? Required. This is not a warm and fuzzy recommendation. This is a requirement for productive work in a functional organization. Anything that you do different from this introduces dysfunction. This could be a small dysfunction. It could be a big dysfunction. But sometimes during recessions, do we have to pull teeth out of our organization? In the startup mode, do startups have the resources to build an organization that looks like this? Not yet. Can they survive? Can we make it through periods of recession? The answer is yes, we can survive for short periods of time, but as soon as we have the resources available, this would be the requisite organization. But this is a hierarchy. Hierarchy is actually necessary to get productive work done. No tribe of anybody ever sent a man to the moon. If you want to get productive work done, it requires a hierarchy. But we don't understand why hierarchy exists. You see, we think hierarchy exists to create a reporting protocol. When the fact is, we report to lots of people all over the organization. Randy, you've got a report that you produce every month. You depend on me for a number that goes on that report. You've got a project that you're working on. You depend on me for a segment of that project. Paul, you've got a project you're working on. You depend on me for a piece of that project. I report to people all over the organization. Hierarchy does not exist to create a reporting protocol. The reason hierarchy exists is to create this value stream where managers are bringing value to the problem solving and decision making of their team. Easy to say, difficult to do. 
Once a month I visit many of the people in this room and we spend two hours in conversation. During that two hour session, can you imagine, because I spend two hours with Randy, can you imagine that I tell Randy how to run his business? No, I don't know anything about general contracting. So I can't tell him how to run his business, but would you say that I bring value to his problem solving and decision making? If so, how do I do that? I don't do it by telling him how to run his business. What can you imagine, because you're not in the room, you can only imagine, what do you imagine are the kind of sentences that come out of me in that discussion? What do I do? I ask questions. Your most effective managers are not the managers who tell other people what to do. Your most effective managers are those who ask the most effective questions. Hierarchy exists not to create a reporting protocol, but to create this value stream where managers are bringing value to the problem solving and decision making of their team members.